I'm Christy and this is Michaela and Taylor and y'all today we are going to be filling our freezer with 20 different soup recipes. We're huge fans of freezer meals around here and we're going to be doing a big batch freezer meal video and this one is going to take us about five days but you'll get to see it all in one sitting. <laughs> It is fall officially, and that is time for soups and yumminess and warmth and comfort in a bowl. And we love to have these ready to go. There are tons of different ways to freeze your soups. You can freeze a whole batch at once. You can put them in Ziploc baggies and lay them flat. I've seen people do that. We're gonna be doing something new with our soups. Um, I got these super cubes is what they're called, and these are specifically made for soups. There's different sizes of them for different things. They can even make little cookie molds and all sorts of things. These are two cup portions and they're really nifty little guys. They are silicone molds. And so when you put your soup in there, you freeze them and cover them up and they stack really nicely in your freezer. But then what you can do is if you want to reuse these molds before you use the soup in them, is you pull them out of your freezer and you wait a couple of minutes with them on the counter so they kind of loosen up and you just pop the soup cube out and you can put it in a Ziploc baggie and stack them really nice and neatly in your freezer. Then these are really cool. These are little corningware dishes basically and they fit precisely and exactly your cubes. So you can stick these straight in the oven with little frozen cubes in them. And that is what we are planning to do. If we have soup night once or twice a week, everybody can go pick out their favorite soup cube, put it in one of these, we can stick them in the oven all at once and we can have soup night. Are y'all excited about soup night this fall? Yep. Yes. <laughs> now, like I said, we are gonna be doing 20 different soup recipes, tons and tons of soup. There's soup for everybody. <laughs> Which ones are you most excited about, Taylor? Potato. Potato soup? Yes. Always with the potatoes. Michaela, what about you? What are you most excited about? Cheeseburger. Cheeseburger soup. That is a new one we haven't what tried. Cheeseburgers. Well, it's got some ground beef in it and cheese and cream. It's, it's a cheeseburger. It does it have soup. ranch dressing? I don't hey. think so. <laughs> you, just, you make cheeseburger and then you stick it in a blender and then you stick it in the pot. No, that's not how we're going to make cheeseburgers. Yeah. So come on. <laughs> but anyway, let us know in the comments down below what your favorite soups for the fall months are and if you love to freeze them or not. Now, I have quite a few of these, so we're gonna be able to do about four big batches of soup per day and keep them running through. If you only have like one or two of these, it's totally fine. A great way to do soups and really build up your stockpile of soups is once or twice a week, just have soup night and double the recipe and then put the doubled amount in your freezer for that day. And then you slowly over time build up that soup stockpile. You don't have to do it all at once like we're doing in a crazy fashion, but if you want to come join us, it'll be fun. <laughs> all right. Let's go ahead and get started. Are y'all ready? Okie dokie. We like to do a lot of batch cooking around here because it saves us time in the kitchen. It's a lot of time investment up front, but then once you put that time investment in over the long haul, it really does save you time. And especially with the fall months coming, we love our family time. I don't wanna spend hours and hours every day in the kitchen cooking. So these freezer meals are definitely the way to go. But when you're batch cooking, really to make the most of your time, you want to combine your ingredients and figure out what the shared ingredients are between your recipes. So for instance, with this recipe, I've got like 10 pounds of ground beef, I've got six whole chickens, I've got all sorts of veggies that I need to chop, and I could wait and do each of those steps while we're cooking, but it just is a lot faster if you cook everything all at once and cut everything all at once, and then as you're doing the recipes, you're pretty much just dumping and going and mixing. So this is really key when you're doing batch cooking and saves a ton of time. The other thing that saves a ton of time and the long haul and really is important if you're batch cooking and doing a whole day or two of cooking like this is to make sure that your sink is filled with warm soapy water 
and you're ready to go. And every time you put finish a measuring cup, you keep it clean and you keep it ready to go. Instead of letting those dirty dishes pile up, really staying on top of those dishes is key when you're doing huge batch meals like this. All right, so like I said, one of the first things we're gonna do is some of this batch stuff at the beginning. And I have this roasting pan and I'm gonna cook the ground beef. Now, I need about 10 pounds of it and we have venison left over from Taylor's deer that she got last year. And we're gonna use some of that venison and we're gonna mix in some ground beef. When you mix in the ground beef and we do about half and half, it adds some of that fat and flavor back in and you can't really even tell it's venison, especially when it's in soup like this. So I'm gonna get that started and we're gonna put it in this Nesco roasting pan and we're gonna get that browned. All right, I wanna make sure it's good and mixed in there. And then I'm gonna set my roaster to about 350 degrees. You can go up a notch. I'm gonna set it here and I'm gonna cover it. And every once in a while, I'll come back to this and stir it and make sure it's getting nice and even. And it'll take a while because that's 10 whole pounds of ground beef. So it, it will take a while, but it's largely hands off, which is really wonderful. And while that's going, I'm gonna start on chopping some of my veggies. All right, time to start the chop -a -thon. The first thing I'm gonna chop is the carrots. I've got a big pile of carrots over here. And one of our sweet, sweet viewers sent us this, and this is a really cool little chopper thing. You can do slices with it. But what I'm gonna use it for today is there's a little attachment that will dice. And since I need lots of diced carrots for the soups, we're going to dice the carrots in here. So I'm gonna cut the ends off them and I'm gonna dice them. I've got my bucket down here for my chicken scraps for the ends. And all right, let's get to chopping. All right, we've got the carrots nice and chopped and these perfect size little diced bits. Next, let's go ahead and do the onions and get them out of the way. <laughs> My least favorite thing to chop, but we're gonna use this little dicer again and hopefully that makes it quick work of these onions. And we have survived the onions. <laughs> That's probably the part of freezer meals I most dread is cutting mass quantities of onions at once, but it is done. Yay! I'm gonna go ahead and pop this open and check on our ground beef. And it's coming along rather nicely. I'm gonna stir it up in here. If you want this to cook even faster, as the grease is coming off, you can drain the grease. All right, now let's get to some of the simpler things. We've got green onions. These are quick and easy, just to chop, chop, chop. And I'm gonna do it all at once. And I will say that before I chop these, I've washed all these veggies really good. And again, that's another thing that works really quickly in a batch. You just wash everything all at once and then you lay it out and let it dry all at once. And <laughs> all right. And next we're gonna do celery. Now I like my celery fairly small in soups. So what I'm gonna do is swap out this little blade because there's a smaller chopper. I like the flavor of celery, I don't necessarily like the texture, so the smaller the better for me. But you can chop it however big you want it for your soups. Freezer meals do take a lot of planning and forethought ahead of time, but that really pays off in the end when you've got a month's worth of meals ready to go and you don't have to think about it at all. But if you're interested, in my process and how I plan things out and find recipes and organize my shopping trips and all those things, uh, let me know in the comments and I will, um, if enough of y'all want, I can do a video on my process so that you can see how I organize and do those things because sometimes that's the most intimidating part about freezer meals 
it's a long day of cooking, but organizing to get to that long day of cooking is really the brain bending part sometimes. And then another round of organization to figure out the most efficient way to cook things, the order and how to cut them and how much of everything you need. None of those are necessarily hard things, but they are tedious things sometimes. <laughs> now, <clears throat> the other thing that you can do with your veggie scraps is you can save your veggie scraps and put them in a freezer bag and save them to make broth with. Actually, since I am cooking a bunch of chickens, I may start doing that with them instead of just feeding the rest to the chickens because, well, <laughs> we are gonna have plenty of, actually, yep, I'm gonna start saving them in here because we're gonna have plenty of chicken carcasses at the end that we could make broth with. And after our turkey last year, I had almost a never ending supply of broth because that turkey made a ton and I kept pulling it off the shelf and pulling it off the shelf and pulling it off the shelf and um, put those in the wrong bowl. And um, Finally, with this soup, these soup meals, we're gonna exhaust our broth supply, so it's time to stock up. I can make a video about how I do my chicken broth too, if y'all are interested in that. All right, look at these perfect little teeny tiny celery cubes. That cutter does an amazing little job. All right, another check on the ground beef. We're getting there. Still pretty pink, but we're getting there. All right, I splashed water up on my shirt when I was washing in between. Um, but now it's time for the potatoes. <laughs> so we're going to peel these and we're gonna dice them. I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to the bigger dicer for the potatoes. Of all of the things that we cut, potatoes are the one we have to treat with a little bit of kid gloves if you don't want them to turn brown. If you don't care if they turn brown, whatever. The browning doesn't really affect their taste, but if you want them to look nice and potato colored, we're, I'm putting them in, after I dice them, I'm putting them in water with a couple squirts of lemon juice in them. And as long as you um, mix them in that and they, they get exposed to that, then they're not gonna brown. And, and the potatoes really are probably the thing that are gonna take me the longest to chop, but they're also the thing that if you have to stop in every recipe and peel and chop potatoes, it takes, it adds up really, really a lot. So to do your potatoes in bulk right at the beginning, it just saves so much time. So put on some good music, hang out, and then just chop away. All right, so I'm gonna chop these up. And then just like the other things, I am going to put them in the dicer. And this makes nice, beautiful potato dices. And then I'm gonna put them in this water with lemon juice. Now, if you don't have a huge enough bowl for this, it's fine, just make sure they get submerged before you move them to a different bowl, submerged and, and kind of covered in that lemon juice mixture. All right, let's finish this huge pile of potatoes. And there we have it, our mass chopped veggies. Now let's check in here and check out our ground beef. That looks just perfect. So we'll drain that and then we will set it to the side for our soups. All right, a ton of the prep work is done. Now it's time to get to the fun part, which is actually doing the recipes. So this first one that we're gonna do goes in the crock pot and it's gonna sit for about four hours on high and it's called Amish Golden Stew. So this is 
the crock pot recipes are just honestly so easy. I borrowed a couple of extra crock pots from my mom so we can have multiple crock pots going at once and that's going to make our job doing this batch cooking way easier. If you don't have a crock pot it's not a big deal. A lot of these crock pot recipes you can just do on the stove on low. And as always I will link every single recipe that we're doing down below in the description so that you have access to them so you're not scratching your head and running and taking notes really fast. Don't worry about that I've got the recipes for you they're down in the description box so I've already measured out some of the ingredients that we chopped up that are sitting over here um, and so I'm going to use two cups of potatoes one and a half cups of carrots half a cup of diced onion and you can see as we're going, when we're doing 20 whole recipes like this, the ability to just dump and go, having had chopped all these, you can see how incredibly faster this is gonna make it. And then we want two cups of diced cooked ham. And I went ahead and I have a, just a bag of already cooked diced ham that I'm gonna put in here. If you have a ham and you wanna cut some of it up for this, that's great too. If you have a bunch of freezer meals that use ham, that's a great time to bust out that ham that's been in your freezer that you bought on sale and uh, really chop it up just like we're doing the big batch things. Then we wanna do two cups of chicken broth. Now this is our canned chicken broth. This little, y'all, my husband 3D printed this little can opener. It's a, it's a mason jar can opener. And it is a lifesaver because <clears throat> if you do a lot of canning, you know a lot of times it's really hard to get those lids off and you just have to pry and pry. This just does it really nice. So it's super cool. Always, always when we're opening canned goods, I do the sniff test to make sure it doesn't smell funky, but we wanna do two cups of this chicken broth. Pour it in. And I will use all of this throughout the weekend. Then I've got a cream of celery soup and a cream of cheddar soup. And I'm gonna put both of these in. Now I'm just gonna mix this all up. And the biggest thing you want to do is make sure that those potatoes are submerged so they soften really well. And that's, that's it. We're gonna add some peas later. I don't wanna add the peas at this point because they'll get super too mushy and they'll basically disintegrate. So we add these and then we put our lid on and set that crock pot for high for four hours. So this is recipe number two and we are making taco soup. This is one of my favorites. It's very, very easy and you only need a few things. You, the only thing you have to pre-cook is the ground beef. You have to cook it and drain it. We have ours right here. So you're going to need one pound of ground beef, one can of kidney beans, two cans of ranch style beans or one can of pinto beans and one can of chili beans, one can of corn, one can of tomato, uh, rotel tomatoes, one package of taco seasoning dry mix, one package of dry ranch dressing mix, and two cups of water. So all we gotta do is dump this in our crock pot. I have this little guy here. And we're going to add everything in, and then we're gonna cook on low for four hours, and that'll be that. Uh, so first we're gonna add our ground beef. It doesn't really matter what order you do it in as long as they're all in there. Corn. So make sure you drain your corn first. You don't have to drain any of the other stuff though. Soup. I like taco soup pretty much anyway. I just like eating it sometimes. I like it over Fritos. I like it with cheese on top. Well, even with Fritos, I put cheese on top. And we're just gonna, that's like a pretty pink color. Put our taco seasoning in and our ranch seasoning. And two 
two cups of our water. And we're gonna stir this together. So I have this all stirred up and ready. So I gotta plug this in, or else it won't work. And I have done that a lot. <laughs> Turn things on and they don't work and me thinking they broke, which I break things all the time, so. <laughs> and we're going to click. There you go. Four hours and I'll, I'll see you back here in four hours. We'll take this out and put it in our cubes. Okay, so next we are going to be making broccoli cheddar soup. So the first thing that I want to do for this, I have all my ingredients pre-measured out, is over medium high heat, I'm going to melt a quarter cup of butter, which is four tablespoons. So after that's done melting, I'm going to add my vegetables which are about two cups of broccoli florets, about a half a cup of diced onions, and then about a cup of shredded carrots that I have already shredded over there. So we're gonna give this a minute and then start dumping stuff in. Almost there. You can do it. Come on, little butter, not for me. There we go. All right, well it's melted now, so I'm going to dump these in. And these are going to cook for about five minutes. Give or take a little bit, depending on how big the slices are and such. These broccoli florets, if you prefer, you can cut them up smaller. I left them their normal size, but that's just a matter of personal preference. After these five minutes are up and the vegetables are all cooked, I'm going to start adding the cream and the milk and the chicken broth and let that cook. That's gonna take a bit longer. That's gonna take 10 to 15 minutes to cook and once it's cooked and gotten super thick, the last thing I'm going to do is add the cheese and then um, let that melt and then it will be ready to go. This is a super easy, quick recipe that I am very excited to try. All right, now that's done. So in goes, start with the chicken broth. Is, that is about a cup and a half of that. Then we have a cup of milk and a cup of heavy whipping cream. And now this is gonna go in and sit and get thick for about 15, 10 to 15 minutes. All right, that sound means that time is up. So last but not least, we are going to add the cheese. Oh, that melting, yeah, that's getting real thick real fast. All right, gonna add a little bit of salt to that. And that's the recipe. So, that is our broccoli and cheddar soup. And all we've got to do is pour it in and freeze it and then it'll be ready to go. All right, so we are now getting this in. We have this scooper is exactly one cup. So I'm just gonna pour these in. I'm doing two cups per serving. And before we stick these in the freezer, we're going to let them set for a little bit, just so we're not sticking boiling hot soup in the freezer. All right, well, there we have it. That is our delicious broccoli cheddar soup. All 
All right, on to soup number four. This one is a sausage tortellini. So we're going to take a pound of Italian sausage and we're going to put it in a skillet and we're gonna brown this along with a cup of diced onions. And this shouldn't take very long at all. We're just gonna stir this up until the meat is nice and brown and the onions are a little bit tender. All right, that looks pretty good. Time to head over to the crock pot. Okay, the first thing that goes into this crock pot is this meat and onions we just cooked. And it smells delicious. Now we want three cloves of garlic. I already have these peeled, but I'm gonna go ahead and crush them. Let those juices out, and then I'm gonna dice them up. Three tablespoons of flour. A teaspoon of dried basil, and this is dried basil from our garden. It still smells so good. We dried it last year, right before the freeze. Half a teaspoon of oregano. Mm, I wish the camera had smell-o-vision. <laughs> smells really good. A little pinch of cayenne, and this is also our cayenne pepper from our garden last year. We dried. One teaspoon of hot sauce. <laughs> I was at a retreat a week, couple weeks ago, and one of the ladies brought these tea tiny little Tabasco sauces. So I'm gonna use my tea tiny little Tabasco sauce. Half a teaspoon of mustard powder, a quarter teaspoon of pepper, a little pinch of red pepper flakes, five cups of chicken broth. This is our home canned chicken broth. There are four cups in one of these quarts. So I just need an extra cup. And now I just stir it up. And we'll add the cream later so it doesn't curdle. But for now, we are going to set that on the crock pot on high for about four hours. All right, the next thing we want to do, I went ahead and pulled the ground beef. I drained it and got it out of the Nesco roaster. Now it's time to start on the chickens. I mentioned earlier that I need six whole chickens because I'm going to use a lot of shredded chicken meat in this. The Nesco roaster will easily hold three chickens. You can cram four in there, but since I'm going to have to do two rounds anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just do three. And I'm going to set this on 375. And it'll take them a couple hours to cook. You wanna keep your eye on the temperature and the internal temperature of these chickens should be 180 degrees when, you, when you're ready to pull them. The more well done they are, the easier they really will just fall off the bone. So that's what we want for our soups really is it makes it so easy to shred when they're really cooked well. You know, a lot of times I'll tell you ways that you can kind of um, cut corners and not have to have all the tools and supplies that you necessarily see me having. But I will say this, you don't have to have a Nesco roaster to do freezer meals and stuff. But if you were to get one thing to make your freezer mealing easier, a Nesco roaster is probably the one thing. Anytime you're doing huge batches of stuff, this just really makes prepping the meats really easy. Otherwise, you would be juggling chickens in boiling pots on the stove or in and out of the oven all day, and this is just set it and forget it, and it's, it really is the one thing that I would recommend if you're starting out doing freezer meals and you want to splurge and get something for freezer mealing, this this would be the one thing that I would splurge on. <laughs> Wonderful, worth every penny. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick before I grab the lid. Okay, lid on and we'll check them again in about two hours and see what the internal temperature is and how they're coming along. 
Um, other than that, let's see, I've got three crock pots going now and this roaster going. We've got one set already in their little super cubes ready to go. So we're, we're doing good today. We're gonna have four whole soups finished by the end of the day and most of our veggies and our meat are gonna be done. So I would say that is a gangbuster first day. We're gonna be spooning out those other soups in just a little bit and we'll shred this chicken up tonight. But we got a lot done today. All right, our Amish golden stew has been cooking for about three hours. So at this point we're gonna take the lid off and we're gonna add in our peas for the last hour of cooking. And we have about 10 ounces of peas that we're gonna add. And we're gonna stir them in real good. And then we're gonna put the lid back on. And in an hour, this will be all done. All right, our Amish golden stew is all done. And now it's time to put it in the cubes. Now, like I said before, you can absolutely just put these in any Tupperware container or a Ziploc bag and lay it flat to freeze. There's so many options to freeze soup, but we're super excited to give these a try. I think they'll make soup night really convenient and let everybody be able to have their own pick. Not to mention they're easy to store and on nights when there's not all four of us here. We can pick and choose, or if we have extra company, we can pull out just a few more cubes. It seems like it's gonna be very versatile. Each of these holds two cups. They also have one cup versions. If you've got little bitty kids and you think for a meal, one cup would do, or if you're serving soup with a side, when we serve it as a meal though, we usually do two cups of soup. All right, that ends up being two, four, six, eight, ten, almost ten cups of soup, five servings, ready to go from this. Next, Michaela's gonna come and she's gonna set up her taco soup. Here's the taco soup. Looks really good. All right, so have our taco soup. Got our cubes over here, and we're just gonna fill these. Two cups. And we're gonna wait till these cool off a little bit before we put them in the freezer. All right, now our sausage and tortellini soup is about 15 minutes or so away from being done. So what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna stir in two cups of kale. Gonna drop in two cups of kale. One bowl. <laughs> and kale. One bowl and kale. <laughs> this smells really delicious. And this will cook down for the last 15 minutes. When that's done, we are going to add the cream right when it's finished. And I'm gonna heat the cream up just a little bit to temper it in the microwave so it's warm cream going in, not cold but we'll do that in about 15 minutes. Also in the meantime, I am gonna go ahead and boil my tortellini. Now you can buy them pre-boiled. You can buy them in the freezer section or the refrigerator section. Our grocery store didn't have those. So ours need to be boiled. So while this is going, that's plenty of time for me to get those boiled. And I'll see you back here in 15 minutes. That kale has had time to cook in about 15 minutes. And now I'm gonna take one cup of cream that's been tempered a little bit in the microwave. I'm gonna pour just a little bit at a time and stir it in. And I have turned the crock pot off at this point. delicious. Now I'm going to take the cooked tortellini and I'm going to pour those in. Stir that up. 
All right, let's fill these guys up. We've got eight more cups of soup here. We're gonna let them cool off just a little bit before we put them in the deep freeze. But total tonight, our first day of soupathon, of soup week. Uh, let's see. It looks like we have 36 cups of soup ready to go. That's 18 servings. So it is going to be amazing. So just a couple things left tonight. Lance is working on the bacon, getting it cooked. These three chickens need to get shredded and we'll shred those and bag them up tonight. And then we'll cook the other three chickens in the morning and get started again. All right, soup week day two it is. And the first thing I'm gonna do is get these two chickens into my pot. Um, I had three chickens planned, but when I was dividing up the meat last night after I shredded it, I realized that I probably am only gonna need two more. And so the other chicken will live to fight another day. <laughs> Well, live, <laughs> he'll live in the freezer. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put these two chickens in here. And just like we did last night, we're gonna cook them on 375 for two hours. That seemed to be really perfectly ideal. Um, I'll show you how I shred them with these. It's really simple. I know some people shy away from using whole chickens. And a lot of these recipes do call for chicken breasts, but I really find a few things to be true. A, using whole chickens is a lot cheaper. And B, using whole chickens, is, especially when you're doing soup or something, is so much more flavorful than just using the chicken breasts. But yeah, I mean, if you're just doing shredded chicken, this is really the way to go. If you just have one chicken to shred, the Instapot works fantastic. And in next to no time, you can have a whole chicken done ready to shred. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. This is hands off and I love it. And like I said, you can really, if you have four smallish sized chickens, you can cram four in here. Um, but three is a good, good number. Today, we just have two. These are actually really large chickens, so. This is gonna be good. <clears throat> and my wonderful husband stayed up last night and he cleaned all the dishes and all the crock pots and everything, which was so incredibly helpful. <laughs> You're gonna see him later because he's got a couple soups too. So let's go ahead and set this. And we have our new fresh dish wash soap ready to go. And now we are going to dump another soup in a crock pot. This is another delicious one. This is going to be white chicken chili. So first we need two pounds of our shredded chicken. I'm going to just dump it in the crock pot. Half a cup of onion. Put that in here. Two cups of chicken broth. One can of corn. Now I am gonna drain this corn. And this is our last can of corn that we canned last year. Um, you wanna drain your corn if you're using home canned corn or regular cans from the store. You do wanna drain it because corn is one of those things that if the juice gets in your soup, it gets really corn overpowered, cornish, corny. <laughs> it just tastes super corny. So um, I always drain my corn for sure, for sure, when you're putting it in a soup. And we have two cans of these Great Northern beans, and they're white beans. One can of Rotel. One teaspoon of Chipotle chili powder. One teaspoon of 
cumin, a teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, then we want a small can of these green chilies. And last but not least, we've got a clove of garlic and a jalapeno. I didn't batch cut these because when I only have one of something to do for a recipe, it's easy just to pull out the little bitty cutting board and go, you could batch cut them earlier. The garlic I don't though, because the garlic I like to do right before I put it in so that it can really be potent when it's cooking. So I have this already peeled garlic. I'm gonna crush it with the back side of my blade and then I'm gonna chop it, put it in here. Now this jalapeno, I have learned the hard way <clears throat> to always use a glove when I'm chopping the jalapeno because if it gets on your skin and you rub your eye or something, it really burns. Even if you wash your hands, sometimes that pepper juice does not come off all the way. So what I'm going to do, I put that on the wrong hand. I'm gonna put this on the hand that's holding the jalapeno. And then I make sure I only touch the jalapeno with this hand. And that way I'm just really careful not to get any in my eyes or anywhere I don't want in an open cut or anything because it is painful. You gotta be real careful with hot peppers like this. Those in. All right, and then we stir it up. And y'all, I have major crock pot envy. Mom's, this is my mom's crock pot and it has a timer on it and it's, uh, it seals like the lid latches on and all sorts of stuff. Sure, all sorts of unnecessary things, but all sorts of really convenient things. <laughs> so that's looking really good. All right, the only thing left to do is to seal this up. And after this is cooked on low for about six hours, we're gonna add some cheese and then cook it a little bit longer. But we're gonna go ahead and set this for six hours. There we go, another soup ready to go. The next one we got is Michaela is gonna bring you some cheeseburger soup. Mmm. <laughs> so this is our sixth freezer meal and we are doing bacon cheeseburger soup in our crock pot. So it is really easy. This, it needs one and a half pounds of hamburger, browned, just ground beef, um, two cups of chopped carrots, six to seven cups of beef broth, one to two cup, cups of chopped onion, two teaspoons of parsley, one teaspoon of pepper, and one teaspoon of salt, and six to eight strips of crispy bacon. So let's get started. So I'm just gonna mix these in however, really, because there's not a specific order on the ingredients. Two teaspoons of parsley. One teaspoon of black pepper. And one teaspoon of salt. Okay, now our carrots. Onions. Potatoes. meat, bacon, and our broth. Let's mix this together. This looks good. All right. So now that we have mixed this up, we are going to put the lid on and make sure it's plugged in. <laughs> so I'm gonna move it over here for a minute. Okay, so it's plugged in and ready to go. I'm just gonna turn this on low and let this sit and simmer for six hours and I will see you back when it's done. Okay, so this next recipe is going to be 
wonton soup. But before we can make that, we're gonna have to actually have some wontons to put in it. So I'm going to show you how to fix this up right now. First thing that I'm going to do is I have, this is two thirds of a pound of pork and I'm going to be browning that. This is a super easy recipe. You pretty much just brown the pork and then dump everything else in. All right, that looks pretty good. So next we're going to start dumping in some stuff. I'll turn the heat down a little bit. So the first thing that we're going to add is going to be a tablespoon of soy sauce. Next we have our chives. We have two teaspoons of these. Mix that up a little bit. Next, we have a teaspoon of this rice vinegar. A little bit of cornstarch, this is about a teaspoon. Then we have a teaspoon of freshly grated ginger and a clove of garlic. And then last but not least, we have half a teaspoon of sesame oil. our pork mixture and next I'm going to show you how to wrap them up in the wonton wrapper. Okay so here is basically how to wrap the wontons. Get just a little bit of pork. It really doesn't take that much because these are really small and stick it right there in the middle and what you want to do is the water will make the wonton wrapper sticky so if you paint those around the edges and then fold it in half like that. Then you're going to take and fold it over so that these bottom two corners stick together and overlap and you can add a little bit of water to that. You want to stick those together. And it should look something like that. All right, there is our bowl full of wontons. And next I'm gonna show you how to make the soup. Okay, so to get started on the soup, the first thing that we're going to do is boil some chicken broth in water. This is four cups of chicken broth and two cups of water. We're gonna let this boil and once they get boiling, we are going to add in 20 of these wontons. All right, it's been a few minutes already, so, and it is now to a boil. So what I'm gonna do next is throw in Counted out 20 wontons. I'm just plop them in there. Next, got some bok choy. Dump it in here. And finally, some mushrooms. And then lastly, going to turn the heat down to a medium low and let this simmer for about 15 minutes and then we'll be back and ready to finish it up. All right, that sound means time. So we are going to give that a little bit of a stir. And the very last thing that we're going to do to finish this all up is add two tablespoons of soy sauce and a tablespoon of sesame seed oil. And that is it. There's our super easy wonton soup recipe to be poured and frozen and saved. All right, it's been six hours and now we are gonna get this white chicken chili 
opened up and oh, it smells amazing. <laughs> and we're gonna stir in two cups of cheese. And we're gonna let that cook for another 45 minutes on low. Okay, so it has been simmering for six hours. So we're going to add our few more ingredients. Quarter cup of flour. Four cups of cheese. One cup of milk. And eight ounces of cream cheese. Going to stir this up. Oh, the cheese is melting. That looks good. Break up the cream cheese a bit. All right, so it is all mixed up. We're gonna cover this back up and let it sit for 45 minutes. And I will see you back when it's done. All right, it is time to get our cubes and to pop these out from yesterday so we can reuse our cubes today. Since you just finished that soup, we need to get it in here. So um, we're gonna pop out our little squares and we have Ziploc baggies for these and we've labeled the soups. You can do whatever you want. You can store them however you want, but the more airtight, the better. They won't get freezer burn. So we're gonna stick them in Ziploc baggies and there should, we should be able to fit several in a gallon Ziploc bag. All right, are you ready? Let's get to popping. And these just pop right out and they make perfect little squares. You can see one cup indented. Yeah, you can see the lines, yeah. That's fun. It looks like we're probably gonna be able to get four in a bag. All right, our soups from day one are all ready to go back in the freezer for the foreseeable future until soup night. Now let's get these washed out and Taylor can go ahead and start dishing up her soup. All right, now that these are washed out and they were super incredibly easy to wash out, we can start doling out the wonton soup. I'm very excited to try this. That's a pretty solid six cups of soup. And now we just have to freeze it. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna shred this chicken that we've been cooking. Now, this is a really simple process. I use a bowl to put the chicken in while I'm shredding it and I just let all the extra pieces fall down in here. And then I use this plate to put the pieces that I'm going to be using, the good meat pieces. Now, everything that's in this bowl will go into a Ziploc baggie and I'll make broth with it later. I went ahead and let my chicken cool all the way down, but you don't have to. Now, if you don't let your chicken cool all the way down, it is incredibly hot <laughs> to pick it apart. So if I'm in a hurry and I need to do that, what I'll do is I will run cold water over it and stick it in a colander and I'll pick it while cold water is running under, over it. But I let mine cool down so it's nice and cool. And I'm just gonna peel the skin off and I'm just gonna start picking off all the meat. And you'll notice since we cooked it for so long in this pot, things are just falling apart, just coming right off the bone. And I kind of feel around with my fingers. This is not the cleanest job, it's messy, but you'll wash your hands, that'll be fine. Um, I feel around with my fingers to make sure I don't have any bones in any of the pieces that I'm putting on the side. And like I said before, this just ensures, A, it's way cheaper to, to buy whole chickens, especially if you can get them on sale. Um, and B, it's, it's more flavorful when you add this dark meat to the soup. It also lets you, if you raise your own chickens, it also lets you use every single piece of the chicken because you are using all of the chicken parts, not just for the meat, but then you're using the rest for broth later. 
And it's just a fantastic way because if you just use the breast, so much of it goes to waste. And we have just two of these today. I did, I pulled three last night and you just pull, pull, pull and make sure every little piece of meat is off of all the bones. And I pick them apart into tiny pieces so that I can feel around and make sure that there aren't any bones because you don't want people having bones in their soup. And the breast part is a pretty safe bet. You won't have bones right in the middle of the breast, but the dark meat can be a little tricky. And I find that each chicken um, usually gives you one to two pounds of meat, depending on the size of the chicken. The chickens I did yesterday were about a pound and a half a piece. Now this is gonna be the last of our big batch meat that we do for this big cook-a-thon. Everything else is ready to go. Aside from things that are just one and done, like I think I have pork in one of my things and another recipe and it is just, we'll cook it as we go, but, but the big batch things are done. Now I will throw a word of caution out at you. Um, I use this, I use the leftover chicken for broth but what you don't want to do is throw your leftover chicken out and let the dogs eat it because bird bones after they're cooked are extremely brittle and they can break apart and really cut your dog's insides so you do not want to feed your dogs cooked bird bones it could, it could be really dangerous now what i will do <laughs> is the bottoms of this pan are full of the juice and the drippings and you can use that in your broth but because there's no bones in that oh our dog zeus outside loves us to dump that on his food he gets mighty excited <laughs> All right, it looks like I got most of it and I'm not super concerned if I, there's a piece or two here and there because again, I'm using it for broth and it's just gonna add some of the flavor to the broth. So there we go. Now we've got all of our chicken for the rest of our cook time. All right. Mine and Michaela's soups are all done. You ready to dole them out? Mm -hmm. Yum. So that yielded us 12 cups, six individual servings of the white chili. And then we've got 14 cups and eight servings of our cheeseburger soup. Yeah, it does look really good, doesn't it? Yum. Okay. So we're gonna put the lids on these. Um, we already kind of let them cool down in the crock pots. So we're gonna stick lids on them and we're gonna get them in the freezer. All right, next up in our super soup week, I just made that up just now. I don't think that's what Christy's calling it. Uh, next up, we're gonna do some clam chowder. Now, granted, this is not fresh coastal clam chowder. It's not, this didn't get dredged in off of the, the boat, off the, the beach at Nantucket Island. Um, fresh this morning. This is gonna be some canned clams, but I still like clam chowder every once in a while. I even eat Campbell's chunky clam chowder, so at least making it ourselves is going to be better. Um, so we're gonna whip this up. It's gonna be pretty simple. Um, if you've made any kind of chowder or potato soup or just gravy, if you make country gravy, to go with biscuits, it's gonna be the same process. We're gonna make a roux, mix in uh, some milk. This will call for uh, some broth and some half and half, a couple of extra things, but it's gonna be the same process. So I'm gonna walk you through real fast what we've got. The recipe calls for two potatoes. We've already uh, cut and cubed most of the things we're using for this whole week. And so I've got two cups of potatoes. I've got a cup of onions. It's gonna be about three cups of flour. Um, four pieces of bacon. Now I will say this, if you're frying the bacon for this recipe, use that bacon grease to start your roux. Because we did it early, uh, I don't have any of that, and so we'll, it'll just be butter. But um, the bacon is for garnishing at the end. 
when, uh, when you're ready to serve, sprinkle it on top. Since we're not serving this immediately, um, we'll save it, we'll garnish it into our little freezing trays. Um, but this is cooked and ready to go. It's gonna take a couple of tablespoons of butter, two cans of chopped clams. And if they're not chopped, then you can pull the old knife out and chop them. A couple of cloves of garlic. Um, which I haven't minced yet. I'm gonna do that right now. We've got milk, we've got uh, vegetable broth or vegetable stock, uh, some half and half. I think it's gonna be about one cup of each of these. I'll have to look again and make sure. Um, and then salt, pepper, uh, thyme, and parsley. So um, these are the ingredients that we need as soon as I mince this garlic. We're gonna head over to the stove. I don't have the benefit of just throwing it in a crock pot. We're gonna have to pay a little more attention to this um, to get our roux going, add stuff. After a little while, we can let it simmer, let it, let it cook down, but um, let me mince this up and then we'll move over to the stove. Okay, so the first step in the recipe that we link to is gonna to be to brown your bacon and um, set aside some of the grease to use to start your roux. Uh, that's the part that we're not able to do, so we're just gonna start with the butter. Now, normally, if you're just making a roux, if you're making gravy or something, you'll heat the butter up and put the flour straight in. This is gonna be a little different because we're gonna start by sauteing the onions, the garlic, and then adding the thyme after we, we get that uh, mixed up before we ever add the flour. So, step number one, I'm gonna turn the stove on. Medium high heat, and we're just gonna start melting our butter. All right, next in goes the garlic and the onion. All right, and this is only gonna take two or three minutes. We're gonna cook it just until the onion loses its white and, and starts to look more clear. So that'll soften them up just enough. And while we're waiting for that, I'm gonna measure out a half a teaspoon of thyme. All right, bad dad joke loading. The good news is I've got plenty of thyme. <laughs> like, hit the like button if you thought that was dumb. Also hit the like button if you thought it was funny. Okay, onions are starting to look pretty good. I'll show you just a, a sample. See how instead of that crisp white color, it's starting to be translucent, starting to be see-through. That's, uh, that's the colored texture that you want. So before these start burning, let's add our thyme. Stir that in real good. And give it just about a minute to let those flavors combine. All right, now this is the part where we make the roux. We're gonna take uh, three tablespoons of flour, dump it straight in, stir it around, and let it soak all of that melted butter. And we're gonna give it about a minute to brown. Now, not dark brown, not burned. Sometimes you want your roux to be very, very dark, um, like gumbo, but this is not going to be that almost burned dark brown. This is just going to be, um, really soak up all the butter real good. And I'll show you real fast what this looks like. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is start adding in milk, which is one cup vegetable broth, which is also one cup. And then I didn't open those cans of clams yet, but we're gonna also whisk in the juice, not the clams, just the juice out of those cans. Now, let me get this. I know I said whisk in, I'm not using a whisk. I'm using a, my spoon right now. Since we've got the, the onions and the garlic in there, this is a little, a little thicker than a normal roux. And so right now I'm still using my spoon to stir. Um, 
kind of break up the clumps and make sure it mixes in good. After I have more liquid in here, I'll switch to the whisk. And that's, we just want to add a little at a time. We want the, the flour to have time to soak it up. It should look thick like gravy. If you dump everything in at once, it'll be soupy and the flour will clump. And you'll have little, little balls floating around in there that you'll have to try to break up and it's just easier to take your time. Okay, here's our cup of vegetable stock. Okay, and now I'm gonna start these cans of clams. I'm cutting a notch across one side that I'm gonna pour out of and then a, a little notch opposite just for an air hole. And not taking the whole lid off, I'm just using that to pour the juice in. As soon as this thickens, then we're gonna add the potatoes. Now the potatoes are uncooked. They're just raw potatoes, cut up, ready to go. They're going to cook in the pot with the recipe. So they don't need to be prepared ahead of time other than clean them and skin them. You could leave the skins on if you want. Now the only thing that I'm leaving out of this recipe, uh, the way it's linked below, is we would normally throw a bay leaf in at this point and I'm just not gonna do that. Um, but here this is, is coming back to a boil. This is going to thicken. And so here in just another minute, we will add the potatoes. Now again, this is two potatoes cut up. We prepared everything in advance, so we're using two cups. We're just gonna dump those all in, make sure they're covered so they will cook. Okay, it's been 12 or 13 minutes. Um, I did come by and stir it every couple of minutes. You wanna make sure that uh, it's not sticking to the bottom and starting to burn. The potatoes are cooked. Now you can just take a, a fork and mash them and tell that they're soft or like, that's no fun. If you're the chef, you gotta taste your food, right? So you can fish one out of there and sample it. Um, the only thing we have left to do here is add our clams. Now while it was cooking, I removed the lid off of these two cans and I measured out the half and half that we're gonna be using. And so at this point, we're just going to add our clams. So we just wanna stir those clams in. They'll heat up quickly. We'll give them a couple of minutes, but we're gonna go ahead and add a cup of half and half. Now, the recipe shows if you don't have half and half um, substitutions. And so you can follow uh, those guides. We're gonna stir this in. We're gonna let it all warm up together. Um, if it is thicker than you want, this is not, this looks good. Um, if it is thicker than you want, you just keep adding half and half until you get the consistency that you're looking for. Other than that, we're going to um, salt and pepper it, and that's just gonna be a, a quick dash. Feel free to uh, keep tasting it along the way and add as needed. A little bit of pepper. Okay, so we're gonna leave that for just a couple of minutes, let everything heat all the way through, and uh, then we're ready to add our, our garnish and put it into our molds. I'm gonna scoop this in, and then what I'm gonna do is cut the bacon up and just divide it across however many molds I was able to fill. All right, and here you have it. Uh, two more soup cubes ready to freeze and add to the stash. All right, so this next soup is going to be chicken and dumplings. So to get started with that, we have some, the chicken that mom shredded that we are going to add into the crock pot along with some veggies. That was about three chicken breasts and this is going to be, we have 12 ounces of frozen mixed vegetables, so we're gonna put that in. Then on top of that, we have 
two cans of cream of chicken soup that we're going to use. All right, and after the cream of chicken soup, we're going to season it. So this has a teaspoon of garlic salt. Using half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning in this. And then a half a teaspoon of pepper. Then we have half a cup of chopped onions. And last of all, before we cook this thing, we have two cups of chicken broth. And we're gonna put this in, and then we are going to let the soup cook on a low in the crock pot for six hours, and then we'll come back to it and finish it up. Soup number 11 is going to be another dump and go crock pot soup. These are super easy, especially soup, super easy. Get it? Ah. <laughs> Especially since we did all the chopping and the cooking beforehand, it just makes it so much easier. We are gonna be doing a chicken tortilla soup and this one is super simple. One pound of cooked chicken in the crock pot, 10 ounces of corn kernels. These are frozen, you can use a can if you want. One four ounce can of diced green chilies, a can of fire roasted tomatoes, 10 ounces of red enchilada sauce, can of chicken broth. This is actually turkey broth from our turkey last year, but it worked just the same. One onion diced up. Now when you're measuring and chopping and things, typically an onion equals a cup. One teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon of chili powder. One teaspoon of ground cumin. A sprinkle of black pepper and then two cups of water. And that is all there is to it. And you stir it up and we're gonna set it on low on the crock pot. And really, I don't add the tortillas or anything until I serve it because they get soggy. And I just like to serve this over tortilla chips. You can serve it over crispy tortillas if you want, but I serve it over tortilla chips because I'm all about easy. <laughs> all right, so we'll see you back here when we're all done with this in about six hours. Next up, we have chicken noodle soup. This is a super easy recipe because pretty much all you do is stick this stuff in the pot and go. We have our ingredients that we're gonna stick in first and let that cook for four to five hours, and then we're gonna add our noodles in and let those soften, and then it'll be ready to go. Okay, so what we're gonna start with is our chicken, we have, this is about two chicken breasts worth of shredded chicken that mama's already shredded and it's gonna go in the pot. Next up, we have two cups of carrots, a whole diced onion, which is about a cup of diced onion, cup of diced celery, then we're going to add our seasonings. We have garlic powder. Going to add about three teaspoons of this. Next, we have half a teaspoon of thyme. Have one bay leaf. I was once making soup for myself and you had just made something with a bay leaf and you were like, yeah, it's good. And so I put one in and had no idea that you were supposed to take them out later. <laughs> so I like crumbled it up and put it in and did it, it was not good. <laughs> so look at the one saying, so take your bay leaf out. <laughs> when you're making soup, take the bay leaf out. Next, we're going to add three teaspoons of parsley. And a half a teaspoon of salt and pepper. Then last but not least, we're going to add a cup of water and then six cups of chicken broth.
All right, that is it. We're going to let this cook for the next few hours and then we'll be ready to add the noodles. All right, it's been six hours. So next we're going to finish up the chicken noodle and chicken pot pie soup. The chicken noodle soup, all I'm gonna do is I have measured out about two cups of these white egg noodles and I'm just going to stick these in and let that cook for 10 minutes. Going to get a stir. And then we are going to finish our chicken and dumplings. So for that, I um, have this thing of biscuits and cut these up into quarters and then dump them in. And after these biscuits are in, we are going to let this cook for about an hour, 60 to 90 minutes, and then it will be done. All right, so these are all ready to get cooking now. These are both gonna go on high. This one's gonna cook for 10 minutes. This one is going to cook for 60 to 90 minutes. And I will see you then. All right, so this is recipe 12 and we are making lasagna soup. So first we're just going to put a tablespoon of olive oil in our Dutch oven pot. And you're gonna set it on medium high. And we're going to add one cup of diced onions. And we're gonna let that sit for three to four minutes and we'll come back when that is done. So now that this is set for about three minutes, we're going to add two pounds of ground beef. And we're going to add two teaspoons of kosher salt, two teaspoons of ground black pepper, and one tablespoon of Italian seasoning. We are going to stir this occasionally. Just make sure the meat is broken up and it's moving around and we're gonna let it sit for about nine or 10 minutes. So I will see you then. So this ended up setting for about seven-ish minutes because ours was already brown. If yours is not already brown, you just wanna make sure it's all the way warmed up and there's no pink left pretty much. We are going to add some more stuff in. So let's go get that. So we got 28 ounces of crushed tomatoes, four cups of beef broth, and one can of mozzarella sauce, one can of marinara sauce. I accidentally said mozzarella sauce. I like pizza too much. That's, <laughs> but we're gonna stir this until it simmers. Then we're gonna add some more stuff. <laughs> So, I'm going to let this simmer, and I will see when it's done. Okay, so we are going to add these noodles in. These are Malfata noodles, 12 ounces. And we're going to cook them until they are al dente. The recipe says about eight minutes will work. So our noodles are done and we are going to add cheese, heavy cream, and garlic powder. So the cheese is a mixture of one cup of mozzarella cheese and one cup of cheddar and Monterey Jack cheese blend. So put that in. Well, it smells really good. Half a cup of heavy cream, one tablespoon of garlic powder, we're gonna stir this together, oh the cheese is melty and gooey, the recipe says to stir it until all the cheese is melted which is gonna happen in about 10 seconds, alright and we are done, 
So we are going to pop these out and bag them up. We already have our bags pre-labeled and you can fit four cubes in each um, gallon bag. Mm -hmm. So let's do this, that is yours. I'm gonna only put two in mine if that's okay. Yeah. Because I don't want to mix my clam chowder with your cheeseburger. Ew. Uh, I'm gonna get frostbite. Burr. My tortilla soup's all done. Michaela's lasagna soup is all done. Let's go ahead and dole these out. I already want to eat this. Yeah, these are really yummy. Okay, so next up we're gonna dole out our chicken and dumplings and chicken noodle soup. All right, let's get these in the freezer. got two four ounce cans the recipe calls for one seven ounce of chopped green chilies and then we're going to throw in one can of corn uh, to go with that and on we've got two tablespoons of baked beans and then of course some of the usual salt and pepper uh, chili powder and parsley we've got three cloves of garlic and four strips of bacon again already cooked all right it just occurred to me that uh, the microphone wasn't on for the whole first part of that <laughs> so what you just heard was us doing a voiceover to catch up and that's why um, the sausage is still cooking this is uh, this is what we want it to look like the pieces that are on the bottom are of course cooking faster than the ones on top so that's why we keep stirring but um, that's that kind of glazed over cooking that we want. All right, now the sausage is done. Next is going to be the ground beef. Uh, again, I know I've said it a few times, ours is pre-cooked. We're just warming it up. Um, this is also when we add our garlic. and our onion. Now, I did not drain off the small amount of grease that the sausage created. Uh, I'm not gonna drain off the beef. Of course, there's not gonna be much because it was pre-cooked. And had I done the bacon in here, I wouldn't drain that off either. You're gonna want those uh, fats, those juices, because we're about to add some flour that's going to soak all that up and that's going to give us the uh, the sauce, the gravy, whatever you want to call it that is in this soup. So uh, we're not draining those off, we're keeping them and uh, I just will have probably a little less today and that's okay. All right, well uh, we discovered that the microphone cut out a second time in this video so I'm going to do some more voiceover and we kind of cut to the chase. You're gonna see everything in the pot right now. Uh, but let me walk you back through what we did. So the last thing that you saw was just adding the onion 
and garlic to the beef that we warmed up. And uh, that only takes a little while to warm back up. Get, let, the, let the onion and garlic kind of cook down. Uh, and then we're going to sprinkle the flour, salt, pepper, and chili powder. And just stir that around really good. We just want that to mix in. Uh, it only needs about a minute. You're not waiting for anything spectacular to happen necessarily. And after that, we start dumping in all of the rest of our ingredients. So that's going to be a half of our canned quart of diced tomatoes or that 14 and a half ounce can, uh, both cans of baked beans, both cans of green chilies, can of corn, our two potatoes or two cups. Uh, this is where we're going to cut up the bacon and throw it back in. Uh, we're going to put our sausage back in and we're also going to add a little bit of water. Now all we're going to do here is bring it to a boil. It won't take very long because we're using this cast iron. It holds heat really well. And as soon as we see it starting to boil, we're going to put it down to a simmer and cover it up for about an hour and that's where we will pick back up. All right, we're back. It has been about an hour. It's been simmering in the pot and uh, we're gonna pop the lid off and see what it looks like. All right, after that steam has time to clear off the lens. Mmm, look at that. And I did not come back and add uh, any water. That's just after it cooked down. We could add some now if we wanted to. Um, I don't want to. This is a good, thick, hearty soup, but it's still a soup. There's plenty of liquid there. So the only thing left is to get this into our molds and get it into the freezer. Um, we've got some other stuff to do today. So I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit. Uh, it won't be quite so hot when we put it away. Now, the only thing left is garnishing this with parsley. If we were serving this right now, we decorate the top of it or maybe individual bowls. Um, what I'm gonna do, kind of like we did earlier with clam chowder, is I'm gonna, after we get it scooped into our molds to freeze, then I'll just garnish each one so they all get a little bit. Um, but that's the only step. So stick around, we'll see what's next. All right, the next soup is going to be chicken pot pie filling soup. I'm super excited to make this. This is gonna be pretty easy. The first thing I'm gonna do is melt two tablespoons of butter into the crock pot. It's on high. And in with that is going to go our onions and celery and some garlic powder. Give that a good stir, and that is going to be heating up. But while that heats up, what we're going to do is go and boil some potatoes. I have about two pounds of potatoes here. This would be four potatoes, but ours are pretty chopped up, so I measured out two pounds. And we are going to boil that in some water. pot right here and we're going to dump this in and fill it with water until it's just a little bit over covering the potatoes and then we're going to put some salt in and let that boil for a few minutes all right so that is all cooked the potatoes have been boiled I boiled them once they got to a nice rolling boil until they were soft enough that if you poke them with a fork, they break, they um, mash really easily. So next we are going to put the rest of the butter in and mash these up real quick. All right, now that that's mashed, next we are going to add three cups of chicken broth and a can of cream of chicken. All right, now that that's mashed, going to open this up. This is where some of our veggies have been in for the past while. And the butter is now all melted. The veggies are pretty soft. And we are going to now add this, these potatoes to the mixture. And next, 
we are going to start adding the seasonings. So first we're going to add two teaspoons of the Worcestershire sauce. Three quarters of a teaspoon of dried thyme. And three quarters of a teaspoon of dried parsley. Teaspoon of onion powder. Half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Then we have two cups of just mixed frozen vegetables. Then last but not least, we have our chicken for the soup. All shredded and ready. All right, now that that's all stirred up, we are just going to let this cook on high for about three hours and then we can open it up and finish up. Okay, so now we are going to make shepherd's pie soup, which sounds really good. We have all our stuff right over here and we're gonna mix that in, but first we have to go mash some potatoes. So if you were just doing this soup, you would have to cook the meat first, but we already have our meat pre-cooked. So all we have to do is put it in and have it warm up in the soup. So I have four cups of pre-cut potatoes here and I'm going to dump them in to my pot. There we go. Now we can't just start mashing these. They have to warm up and there also has to be water. So let's get that. All right, we have this with one inch of water and that one inch. So just about covering the potatoes a little more. And we're going to boil this for 10 to 15 minutes on medium and I will see you back when this is done boiling. So our potatoes have boiled and we drained the water out. Now we're gonna mash them up and they are nice and soft. All right, so we've mashed our potatoes and now we are going to prepare the broth. All right, I'm gonna move this pot and we're gonna melt two tablespoons of butter. So our butter is melted and we are going to turn this down to medium low and put one cup of diced onions. Mine is already pre-cut. And we are going to cook these until they're softened, which takes about five minutes. So I'll see you when these are softened. Okay, so our onions have been cooking and we are going to add our seasonings. Um, I have them all mixed in this bowl. We have some, a little bit of pepper. It doesn't say exactly how much. Two teaspoons of Italian seasoning, half a teaspoon of mustard powder, a quarter teaspoon of ground sage, and um, three quarter teaspoons of salt. So we're gonna add this in there. Mix that up good. So now we're gonna add a quarter cup of flour and we'll just mix this in good and then let it sit for one minute. All right, so the flour it has been sitting in our onion garlicky seasoning mix mixture. Um, we're going to add our chicken broth just a little bit at a time. And we're gonna turn this on medium low heat again. Mix this up till there aren't any chunks left. Well, chunks of seasoning. <laughs> can't really get can't really get rid of the onion chunks though. All right, so now we have um, Worcestershire sauce and half and a half. We are going to do three quarter teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. <laughs> One. Three. And two cups of half and half. Now 
Now we are going to add our beef. If your beef is not already browned, then brown it and you can add it in. We're going to let this boil a little bit and then we're going to reduce it to a simmer. So I'll see you when it's done boiling. Okay, so we put our potatoes in, but we had to get a bigger pot. Um, we are going to stir this up a bit and mix in some more stuff. So now we're gonna go grab some frozen veggies. All right, so I got a cup and a half of mixed frozen vegetables, just carrots and peas and corn and green beans. We're gonna pour that in. Mix that up good. It smells really good. All right, and now we're going to turn the heat off and gradually sprinkle in the cheese and let it all melt. I have here two cups of shredded cheddar cheese that I'm mixing in. So we need three quarter cups of sour cream. All right, so our soup is done. All right, it's been another busy day making soup. We've got to take yesterday's frozen soup out of our molds so we can put today's fresh soup in them and get another batch into the freezer. So we have got, what's this one? Chicken and dumplings. Chicken and dumplings, what are these? Lasagna. Lasagna, up here we have chicken tortilla and back here in the corner, chicken noodle. So again, uh, when we have four of one kind, four will fit in a gallon Ziploc bag. So let's see if we can pop these out and bag them up. All right, zipping up the last bag now. Give us a second to wash those molds and uh, we'll get ready to start dipping in the, what did we make today? Shepherd's pie soup. Shepherd's pie soup. Taylor made chicken pot pie. Because mm -hmm. we already put away chicken and dumplings. Mm -hmm. And I did the cowboy stew. So we will be right back. All right, so we now have finished, almost finished our chicken pot pie filling. There's just one last thing to do, and that is to add two cups of half and half. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then it will be done and ready to pour into the molds. And this one is all done. Right, and now to start doling this stuff out. So this is all done and we are ready to put it in our little cubes. And this looks delicious. All right, and now it's my turn to um, almost said serve up, we're not quite serving, but to dish out into our freezer molds the cowboy stew. All right, so we are making pasta fagioli soup. This is number 15, I think. So this is an easy dump in the crock pot one. Um, we already have our meat pre-browned and our vegetables pre-chopped up. So if you don't have that, you want to brown the meat and chop up your veggies. We are going to just dump all this in. So we're going to add our seasoning, which I've pre-mixed already. We have one bay leaf, which we are going to remember to pull out. 
half a teaspoon of crushed red pepper, two teaspoons of Italian seasoning, two teaspoons of garlic powder. We're gonna pour this in. Then we have two um, 15 ounce cans of kidney beans. Four cups of chicken broth. 14 ounces of chopped tomatoes. One and a half pounds of ground beef. Remember, you wanna brown this before you put this in. Three large diced carrots, three celery stalks, and one large onion, all diced. <laughs> one pound of shell noodles. So we are going to put this on high and let it sit for four hours and I'll see you back then. All right, we're back again. This is, we think, number 16. This is Italian Wedding. And Michaela and I are tag teaming this one. Uh, she's getting the mixture ready because we're gonna start with meatballs. Now what all is in your mixture, kiddo? Uh, three quarter teaspoon of salt. Well, half a cup of Italian bread crumbs, third a cup of fresh parsley finely chopped, and a quarter teaspoon of pepper, and then we have a quarter cup of Parmesan shredded, shredded Parmesan cheese. Okay, and the only thing we're adding to all of that is three cloves of garlic, which I am mincing right now, and a half pound of ground beef, and a half pound of ground pork, which I have on the little plate right next to me. So what I'm gonna do is start making these meatballs. We're just gonna mix all of this together, um, work it together so it mixes evenly, but not work it, work it, mush it, mush it. Like we don't wanna turn it into hash or something. We just want the, the ingredients to mix together. And I'm gonna roll them in about three quarter inch um, meatballs. Now this is soup. This is not big, huge Italian uh, meatballs to serve as their own meal with spaghetti or something. And so these are going to be small. So I'm going to put beef, pork, and a little more beef into this bowl. And we're going to mix it together like so. So there's a little bit of everything. Let's get our garlic in there. All right, why don't you dump that shredded cheese in here for me? What I'm doing is I'm just mixing the larger, chunkier things together first, and then we're gonna dump the, the powdered seasoning bowl that she has last on top of it all. All right, I made a bowl inside the bowl. You just dump it all in there. Now I'm just gonna kind of fold it in. Oh, yep, one more. We've got egg. I feel like maybe I should have done the egg already. This is gonna be fun and messy. It's also gonna help it all stick together. And I'm absolutely gonna have to wash my hands after this. Okay, hopefully that is pretty good without just turning it into complete mush. Yeah, so what we're gonna do just pull chunks of this off. And these are gonna be little meatballs about like that, maybe even a little smaller than that. So I'm gonna head to the stove and start frying these and I'm gonna let her start filling this other crock pot. Four cups of fresh spinach. And since this is the last ingredient, I'm gonna go ahead and dump it in here. So that is two, four. I'm gonna pour in my eight cups of chicken broth. 
three fourths a cup of our pasta. This is Decisi pasta, or I believe that's what it is. Decisi, Deciso, I forgot. Two celery ribs diced. One and one fourth cups of diced carrots and one yellow onion. Diced, all diced. All of it must be diced. One and a half teaspoons of garlic powder. Two teaspoons of Italian seasoning, a little bit of salt and pepper. All right, we're gonna mix this all together. So when he is done with the meatballs, we're gonna set this on high for four hours, or if you wanted to, low for eight. Just wanna show you all we did. A little bit of olive oil in the bottom of the pan. It took me four or five, I forget now, batches of however many is in there, a dozen, 15 at a time. So all we're doing is browning the outside of the meatball so that it holds its shape. It's not cooking all the way through. We don't have to try to cook it all the way through because it's gonna be in the crock pot for the next four or eight hours, four for us. And so I'm gonna take these that are fresh out of the skillet. And go ahead and pop them in there. And I'll just give you a quick close up of one of these. Mmm. Check it out, yo. And so the rest of these go all in. I'm gonna stir it together and then we'll get the lid on. And that is one more soup in the bag this evening. Uh, when that's all done, we'll take these out. We'll rotate out our molds in the freezer and we are almost done. We're getting so close. All right, so next one up is probably the one I'm most excited about. We're making potato soup. So to start this off, we have about four large baking potatoes worth of diced potatoes. Measured out since baked potatoes are a little bit larger and also specifies large baking potatoes. We measured out a little bit more than just a cup per potato. So we have about six cups of the pre-diced potatoes. And the first step is just going to be to boil these until they are cooked. So to start off, we're just gonna get this on the stove and all boiled up. Okay, so we just finished cooking the potatoes and I've drained them out. So next we're going to use a um, pot and melt some butter in it. We have two thirds of a cup of butter. So we are going to turn this on and melt this up. Got a little bit of a stir. After this is finished melting, we're going to add two thirds of a cup of flour to this and make a nice thick mixture. Right now I'm going to add in this flour. And that's nice and smooth. So now I'm going to gradually add, we have six cups of milk measured out. Next, we're just going to bring this to a boil and make sure to keep stirring this while it's doing that. As soon as it's at a boil, we're gonna turn off the heat and then whisk in. We have a, I have had a cup of sour cream measured out. And then we add the potatoes and we're done. And already while it's just cooking and starting to get considerably thicker. Right, it is at a good boil. So now we're going to take that off of the heat and what we're going to do next is stir in the um, sour cream. Going to whisk this in. And then last but not least, we are going to add our potatoes. And there it is, all finished. So we're gonna let this cool for a little bit and then it will be ready to go into the trays. All right, so here are our soups for today that we're going to pop out and stick in bags. All right, so the last thing we gotta do to wrap up tonight is dish out these soups.
We are sprinting down the home stretch. We just have two recipes left to go. This is our 18th soup. No, this is our 19th soup. <laughs> it's hard to keep track. And later this afternoon, we'll do our 20th with gumbo. But right now is, this couldn't be easier. This is a super simple freezer meal beef stew. Later we'll do the complicated gumbo. It's not as complicated as it sounds, but um, this one is just a dump and a go and you don't even have to brown the meat or anything. It's just a ready, set, easy peasy. So first of all, in the crock pot, you're gonna dump two pounds of beef cubes, stew meat, whatever your favorite kind of beef stew meat is. Then one medium onion, six stalks of celery, and remember we've already cut our veggies. Six carrots. Now, I cut 20 whole pounds of potatoes initially when I cut the potatoes um, because it's hard to kind of guesstimate exactly how many, how much each stew will take and we had some leftover potatoes and I just think potatoes go great in beef stew even though they're not in this recipe. So we're gonna add them. And that's four cups of potatoes. Another slight change I'm gonna to make to the recipe is the recipe calls for tomato juice. I don't have tomato juice, but I did have one last jar from last year of canned chopped tomatoes. So I'm going to use our last 2023 jar of canned veggies in here. But because it calls for tomato juice and there's nothing else that's soupy in there, I'm gonna add a can of beef broth. I wanna make sure we have enough liquid. Now it also calls for sugar, but because I put the potatoes in there and they're starchy, I'm not gonna put sugar in there. And then two teaspoons of salt. And I'm gonna stir this up really well. If you want a little better flavor, you can go ahead and brown that meat. But right now, I'm just wanting to get it in and get it done it's gonna cook because we're gonna leave this in the crock pot for about eight hours on low. We did it, one soup left. And this soup is the crown jewel of our soup season always, and it is gumbo. We are going to be making gumbo as a South Louisiana girl. This is a staple in our house. Um, pretty simple chicken and sausage gumbo. This has been a, a family favorite of ours since I was a teeny tiny little kid and it comes from the Pirate Pantry cookbook. So because all of my veggies that are chopped up already, there's not a whole lot to do to prep for the gumbo. I do want to go ahead and brown some sausage and I've chopped up our smoked sausage into little rounds and we're gonna pour it into a skillet and we're gonna go ahead and brown that. And just get a good little brown on the edges. This not only helps us bring out the flavor in the sausage, but it gives us a good base for our roux. We're gonna cook the roux in the fond that comes off the sausage. All right, we've got our sausage and it looks nice and brown. And I'm gonna go ahead and pour it into our gumbo pot. That's three pounds of sausage. You can use two to three pounds of sausage, by the way. And I'm not gonna scrape this pan totally clean because I'm gonna make my roux. Now, a roux is your base for your gumbo. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my skillet on medium high. And I'm gonna use half a cup of oil. Now, if you had super duper oily meat that you were browning, you could use some of that as your oil. But I'm gonna use half a cup of oil and one cup of flour. Now, a Cajun roux is going to be fairly dark. So you're gonna want it to look like a dark caramel. It has a very distinctive smell. It's one of those things that to learn it the first time is kind of just trial and error, but once you get it down, you know by instinct what this is supposed to smell like, what it's supposed to look like. You do want to continually stir it because it will burn and it will give your whole soup a really burnt taste if you have burned roux. But on the flip side, you don't want to underdo it at all because if you underdo it, your gumbo is not going to have that rich, deep, 
Cajun flavor. The roux is really key to the whole thing. The roux is what makes it taste like gumbo. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper to my roux. This just gives it a good flavor base. It's gonna take a good few minutes to get to the consistency and the texture and the color that we really want in a roux, but don't step away from it because it can burn really fast. And even if you don't burn it, you're probably gonna set off your smoke alarm. <laughs> I do almost every time I cook gumbo. <laughs> we had a video doing this last Thanksgiving because this is also a really great recipe. Instead of using chicken, you can use your leftover turkey and it is a fantastic way. Instead of having turkey sandwiches for 800 days in a row, you get gumbo. <laughs> You also really wanna be careful when you're making your roux. Because it's oil-based, if it pops and gets on your skin, it will burn really bad. So be really careful with this and don't get it on your skin. All right, I don't know if you can tell, but this roux right here is about right. It's not burned, but it is definitely a dark, dark caramel color. And that's pretty good. It smells just right on the cusp of burned without being burned. It's hard to describe unless you've experienced it. So it's one of those trial and error things, like I said, but do trial. I mean, the worst that could happen if you just burn it all together is you could just throw this part out and make a new batch of roux. None of your other ingredients go to waste, but <clears throat> it only takes a couple times and you'll get it. You'll be a pro, but this is a perfect roux right here. All right, now I'm gonna just pour the roux into my big stock pot. Turn my fan off now, so maybe that's not quite so loud for you. And then it's just a matter of dumping in all the ingredients. So we've got our sausage and roux in here. We want two large onions, which we've already diced. I'm gonna put a shake or two of garlic powder. Alternatively, you could put fresh garlic in there. A cup of chopped green onions. A quarter cup of parsley. One chopped bell pepper. About three or four chopped celery stalks. And two to three pounds of shredded chicken. And like I said, when we were cooking our chicken, I like to use whole chickens because it really does add a lot of flavor to the gumbo. If you just, you can just use chicken breasts, but it's a lot less flavorful than if you use the whole chicken. Then we wanna sprinkle some red pepper, some black pepper, and some salt. And very last, we want four quarts of water. Then I'm gonna turn it on high, and I'm gonna bring this to a boil after I stir it up really, really well. Now, a lot of times if I'm just cooking gumbo and I'm not doing a ton of other things, I will cook the chicken and use that chicken, the water that the chicken cooked in to add flavor to this, or you can use chicken broth. But for today, we're just using water and it'll, it'll turn out delicious. Once it starts boiling, we are gonna turn it down to medium, to medium to low, depending on your heat. You don't want it a super high rolling boil, but you do want a consistent simmer at least. And you wanna let it set for two to three hours. And we will see you back here when this gumbo is all done. All right, it's been about two and a half hours. Oh, it smells delicious. This looks perfect. All right, now to empty cubes and fill more cubes. All right, let's see. It looks like we've got pasta fagioli, potato soup, and wedding soup, right? Yep. Let's go ahead and put it in our Ziploc baggies. All right, clean super cubes and the last two batches of soup. We've got gumbo here. And normally you would serve gumbo over rice and you could put the rice in there, but I don't necessarily like to do that. I don't store my gumbo with rice in the fridge or in the freezer. I love these little individual minute rice packs that you can just throw in the microwave. They're one serving and you can just throw them in and go. 
but it really is quick to make rice any way you slice it. You can do minute rice on the stove or you can do actual long grain rice and you can do it in your rice cooker or boil it and it'll be done by the time you heat this up. So um, really quick and easy to just add rice later or rice cauliflower if you're trying to eat healthier. This smells really good. <laughs> It's been hard to have gumbo cooking all day in the house and not, not eat it. <laughs> we're gonna stick these in the deep freeze overnight and let them freeze and then we're gonna pull out and see all 20 different types of soups and how much we actually froze this week because honestly, I haven't even been keeping track of how much it is. <laughs> um, but we have a ton. Our freezer space is filling to the brim with soup, soups, and more soups. And then we're gonna demonstrate how to heat them up and have a great meal. So we will see you when we are pulling them all out. Okay, it's been overnight. Our soups are all frozen. We're gonna dull these into bags. And then we're gonna get out absolutely everything we've done so far. So this is gumbo and beef stew. These cubes have really been workhorses this week for us and I've been really impressed with how they've performed, how they've cleaned, how easily the soups just pop right out. It's, it's really been fantastic, highly recommend. Again, you can do freezer meals, you can do soups and put them in whatever and Ziploc bags or whatever, but. Man, this makes it so, so easy. Let's get everything else out and see what all we've made this weekend. Here it is, all 20 of our soup recipes. We counted and we have, what daddy, 108? 108 blocks or servings, which is 216 cups so if we're eating a meal, which is soup, we'll get one block. We can all pick the same block and throw it in a, just a regular pot to warm it. Or we can pick whatever we want and warm it in our little trays. Or if it's going to be a side with a bigger meal, then two cups would be two servings. We'll grab two blocks and, uh, and heat those up together. And that should be enough for us to have a little cup of soup. So there's a lot of meals here. Yeah. We're way excited. Girls, what are you most excited about trying? I don't know. All of it? She Taylor, any of it. Listen, Taylor has been trying to get into the soup every day this week. And finally, she's excited. Soup is her favorite thing. So she's way excited to get to eat soup for lunch every day and dinner and breakfast. <laughs> what are you most excited about, MJ? Pie. Ooh, the shepherd's pie looks really good. And I'm the burger soup. Oh, the cheeseburger soup. I forgot about that. The gumbo I'm obviously excited about, but I am excited to try the shepherd's pie and the cheeseburger soup. What about you, Daddy? Well, some of these y'all made and I wasn't even around, so I'm catching up. I didn't know there was a cheeseburger soup. That sounds good. I really <laughs> want to try my uh, clam chowder that I made. Uh, I always love gumbo. I always love potato soup. I think I'm gonna to have to race the girls to the potato soup or I'm not gonna get any. <laughs> um, man, the lasagna soup just smelled so good when it was cooking. Uh, I don't know that I have a favorite. I just wanna start trying them. Well, <laughs> let's, better. tonight for dinner, it's soup night. So let's go grab our containers and everybody can choose a soup. Like we showed you at the beginning of the video, Super Cubes makes these perfect little oven containers that fit one of these cubes. So we each have one and we're gonna put our choice of soup in. Now, Super Cubes recommends that for these bricks, it's 400 degrees in the oven for about 45 to 50 minutes, depending on how thick your soup is. But you wanna check it for every once in a while. Since these are all fully cooked soups, really all you're going for is warming it all the way through. If you thaw it earlier, then it's like 30 minutes heat time. You can also just put these in a pot and heat them on the stove or stick them in the microwave. Any of those options work. But we are gonna do oven today, so let's all pick our soups. I am gonna go for gumbo. 
because I have been smelling that all night. <laughs> and see, they fit perfectly right in the little carafes. Plus, they have the marks in them. Yep. <laughs> Indented in the side, it's little one cup, two cup marks. Because <laughs> that's what's on the little things. Perfect. Lasagna soup from MJ. I'm doing clam chowder. All right. I knew it. What about you, Taylor? I'm going to go broccoli cheddar with this one. Broccoli cheddar for the Taylor. I love it. <laughs> now, also, like we've mentioned before, if your soup is looking a little dry, you can either add broth, water, or milk, depending on the type of soup you have. Um, my gumbo looks great. Um, if, if you get it in the oven and it's still looking dry, you can add that later, but I'm gonna just stick mine in. How about y'all's? Yeah. yeah, they look ready to they go to good? me. Here's just a close-up shot of how perfectly those fit. 